welcome to bird stun today we are going to talk about a very common bird of whole of india the greater cockle it's a very simple looking bird it has a long hind claw they are entirely black with brown wings but you may notice they have a ruby red eyes they have a hooked bill which is the medium size and the color of crow shiny gray and also the underparts breast belly and vent are black but are against light they turn shiny purple the the juveniles have spots on the head and they have white bars on the underparts and the tail the subspecies of the greater cargo tend to have different sounds means the normal hmm hmm sound may change the females tend to be much much bigger than the males since size the size of the greater cargo is 48 cm and the weight 225 to 400 grams so you can easily assume that the females should be 300 to 400 grams compared to the males the hatchlings of the greater cargo have black skin instead of flesh color skin meaning when they has they look black so they already are black and white hair like tints grown in their eyes and beak so they actually look a bit older even though they have hatched from the eggs but the belly is pink and the upper mandible is black with a pink edge i the iris of the hatchling is brown gape is yellow feet are dark brown gray so almost same to that of a adult but small in size and more heavier mm-hmm. the call of the greater cockle the greater cockle makes a booming low coop coop coops with variations among individuals and variations are also seen when a female and male are both doing booming coop coop scoops not scoop 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 coops and also the female the difference between a male and female when they are in a duet mainly when i'm saying duet i mean when the female and male both at uh, have a com- competition normally for market territory and so on to make the relationship better since the monogamous so the female has a low pitch call now other sounds are the greater cackle lotok lotok a rapid It rattling, lotok, lotok. It sounds like rattling. A metal object is is moving a lot, and they make a scolding, skia, and a hissing threat call. If you hear them hissing, means that threat is posing them. Normally, where is the greater cockle found? A question on your minds. First of all, we already know it's found in most of India and the subcontinent. Now, where in the subcontinent and the country, jungles, cultivation, urban gardens, wetlands, deserts, almost everywhere in the country, except for snowy places like the Himalayas and Ladakh, they also seem to be clambering around these habitats in an odd fashion, jumping, flying, and walking in a funny manner, often scavenging. They are often seen in these habitats to look under undergrowth. normally look into fallen leaves and and stubble on the ground they are, they go about slowly they day to day life in these habitats what does the greater cockle eat the greater cockle eats insects caterpillars snakes small vertebrates like the saw scale viper lizards eggs nestlings cascabella fruit and seeds They also eat flesh of misocarps of ripe fruit, ripe fruit. A big damage to fruit which is just got ripe. It must be bad for fruit trees, since a fruit trees his reproduction success has been destroyed and fall because they're just destroying the fruit. They're not letting the seed get distributed. And the saw scale viper is an extremely venomous snake, probably the most venomous after the king cobra. the greater cockle's behavior the sun bed in the morning alone or in pairs i have seen this behavior myself why did they go on top of a palm tree and sun bed 
they go on top of an abandoned building, the favorite spot to sunbathe. They normally prefer broken roofs and buildings with a broken roof and village houses. They go in and out of abandoned houses. They like to be on top of vegetation spread in the wings. And the territories can be big of the greater Kakal. One to seven hectares it can be. A lot of territory. So they are territorial. They are, lay, they are active in the evening, morning, and, and most of the afternoon. They are known to be found when the sunlight is raging. Hmm. Now, the nesting and the breeding of the greater Kakal. They are monogamous mainly. In southern India, it is June. While normally in Indian subcontinent, it is September. Monsoon is a preferred season for the greater Kakal. The courtship is chases underground and food gifts to the female. The female lowers the tail and drops the wings to accept the male's food gifts. The nest building is done by the male. Three to eight days it takes alone. It is a cup with a dome inside dense vegetation like creepers, bamboo, Clump or pandanus crowns. Yes, pandanus crowns. The, the nest is built six meters above the ground on palm trees, in fact. And it is three to five eggs or two to four eggs, depends among subspecies. The egg is 28 to 36 millimeters and weighs 14 grams. They are chalky white with a yellow glaze that bears off or period. 15 to 16 days is the incubation. They fledge in 18 to 22 days. Fledging is the when a hatchling turns into a fledgling. Fledgling means a young bird which has learned to fly. The female also contributes to the nest but not as much as the male. They are, um, sometimes they are abandoned or marooned in by large built crows a threat to their life hmm. the subspecies of the greater kakal and threats to the greater kakal first the subspecies the subspecies the nominate form the centropos sinensis sinensis lives in the indus valley in the sub himalayan and gangetic plains and also the foothills of assam Nominate subspecies or form means that this is the subspecies form that gave rise to all the other subspecies. It means they came from North India, in the sub Himalayan Gangetic Plains. So they live high up in the mountains for sure. So their lifestyle must be different since there are no palm trees and vegetation to live at, but instead barren deserts, such as these land, sand, stone. Then the Centropus sinensis parvati. The Hindi name is parvati, so instead this is parvati. It is in peninsular India in states like Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, and southwards. They look different compared to other greater cargoes. Instead of underparts being in glossy purple, it's glossy blue instead, and the forehead also tends to be glossy blue. So it means instead of just being plain black, it's shiny blue instead. The face and throat are also brownish instead of black. And the mantle, a part of the wings, basically let's say the shoulder of the wings, is black altogether, not completely brown. You could mistake it for lesser cockle because it looks dull. Then the centropus sinensis intermedius it can also be mistaken for the lesser kakal because of small size the only difference between greater kakal and lesser kakal is the size but this is small in size compared to others it is found in assam and west charcha district then centropus sinensis undermanesens lives in the andaman islands Then the juveniles of the centropus sinensis are unmarked dull black means they do not have any spots in the head like normally they do 
and also they underparts are dark because even though they used to have white bars on their underparts and the wings instead of just being in chestnut it's dusky brown instead and also the centripetal sinensis parity is like the lesser cockerel indifferentiable but the only difference is that the lesser cockerel has a stubbier thick bill of short tail and wing tips go into the tarsiers and it has its wing line in chestnut wing lines instead of just being plain brown they have got lines on their wings which are chestnut and they do not have ruby eyes they have dark eyes and the tail tends to be green or bronze sheen then the females of the subspecies centripetal sinensis parity have dusky or sooty wing coverts in november to january and they live in the punjab plains to not and also they look exact as other subspecies found in the not then the threats to the greater kakal the main threats are not related to man but instead related to disease then most porridia it may be a hard disease for you pronounce i'll pronounce it again have most porridia disease lives in the blood red blood cells to be specific then the have more proteocentrop disease comes from the jacobin cuckoo then centripetal sinensis by mosquitoes also they have ticks hema physalis ticks so these are all the main threats and they fall under this concern the population is mysterious but uh, they are least concerned because they have a good range and they are very common to be seen all around the subcontinent and india